Hi, I'm Lee Halliday, and today we'll be seeing how to add a Google Places search input to a map in React. Before we get started, make sure to have the Geocoding API, the Map JavaScript API, and the Places APIs enabled because they're required for the functionality we're building. This is the map we're working with, so the map is already up and rendering, and why don't we take a quick overview of the code so far. So we've got our inputs at the top and we're going to be working with the use places autocomplete package. This does the heavy lifting of talking with the Google Places API, but we're going to be using the reach combo box package to actually display the results and the user input. Now, as you saw before, we have the map already rendering. So for that to have happened, we needed to load the Google Maps script. For this, you need to make sure you've passed in the places library. Otherwise, the rest of the demo won't work. And once it's finished loading, we're rendering out the map. And in this map is where we're going to be rendering out a component called Places Autocomplete. We'll talk about the set selected prop in a second, but that basically allows us to, to pass a location, which will then render that location as a marker onto the map. So the Places Autocomplete component, it's empty right now. This is where we're doing all of the work in this tutorial. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to call the use places autocomplete hook. And it will give us some data back for the rest of the user interface. The first value is ready, whether it's ready to go having loaded the Google script. And after that, we have the value and set value. This is for what the user has typed into the input box. After that, we have suggestions and suggestions is both the status of the result, whether it's okay or not, whether we fetch the results correctly, and also the data, all of the actual suggestions. Lastly, we have a clear suggestions function that we can call after the user has specifically chosen one of them. So if we save this, we now need to come and focus on the user input, because if we come here, we haven't actually rendered anything out yet. So as I mentioned before, we're working with the reach combo box package, and the first component we're going to add is ComboBox itself. So ComboBox does nothing alone. Nothing will be rendered at this point. Inside of it is where we need to put the ComboBox input. So ComboBox input like so. And now I should mention there are other packages for adding Google Places to React, but I found that these two in combination provide the most flexible experience for you as a developer. So for the combo box input, we need to start by rendering out the value, what they've typed in so far. And at this point, we can probably see an input showing up, although it doesn't look great yet. So we need to capture whenever they type in a value to this input. So we'll do on change, that will give us an event. And then with the event, we can call the uh, set value function, passing in the uh, events target, which is this input, its value. So if we save that, we're now capturing changes and you can type in. So if we search for Google Kitchener, well, you're expecting to see some results, right? Well, that's what we'll be working on next. But before we get there, we just want to say this is disabled if it's not yet ready. So as soon as it's ready, it will enable this input and the user can start typing in. And after this, we want to just pass a couple more things, a class name, so we'll pass a class name of combo box, combo box input, and a placeholder. So the placeholder will say search and address. So I set up some very minimal styling for this. It's literally just setting the width and the padding of this input. But if we come back now, it's starting to look a little bit better. So next we have to show the results that we're getting. And we show the results in something called a combo box popover. So we'll type that out, combo box popover. And inside of here, we have a combo box list. Combo box list. So inside of the list is where we need to show all of the suggestions, the results. But we shouldn't really do that unless the status is OK. So we'll say, if check if the status is equal to OK. And if that is true, we can render out the data, the actual suggestions. So it's an array of essentially location descriptions. 
And we can map over that. And for each one, we're given a place ID and a description. And then the thing we'll actually map out or return in this case is the combo box option. Combo box option like that, and it will be self-closing. So whenever you're mapping something in React, you should pass in a key. And because we have the place ID, we can actually use that as our key. And this package also requires us to pass in a value. So we'll pass in the value as the description itself. Did I type this correctly? I think I did. Okay, perfect. We come back and we start to see that it's rendered out the results of our search. So if we were to select one, we need to handle that selection. And that's where we're going to be adding an on select handler to the combo box itself. And we're going to get it to call a function that doesn't yet exist, but it will be called handle select. So we're going to define this right here. So handle select, and it's going to be an async function because we'll be converting the address that they've selected into latitude and longitude coordinates. And what's passed to this select handler is the val that was chosen when they selected. So it will be a string that represents sort of the full address that our user has chosen. The first thing we need to do is basically update the value that has been uh, prior to this point set by just the user typing into the input. But in this case, what we want to do is set the value to whatever they chose. Um, we could maybe change this to address, which will be more clear. So we'll change the value to the full address that they selected. And we'll say false because we don't need it to go fetch additional data. We're just overriding and setting this value. After that, we're going to clear the suggestions because you've made your decision, you've made your selection. We don't need to give you all of those options anymore. And at this point, we can work on converting the address string into latitude longitude um, coordinates. So for that, we'll say results is equal to await a call to a function called get geocode. So we'll go fill in this function in a second, but get geocode, and we're going to use in a second get lat long, come as helper functions from use places autocomplete. And get geocode, you're asked to pass in the address. So we'll do that. We'll await for the results, and then we can convert that result into latitude and longitude. So we'll say lat and LNG. Google always works with LNG, not LON or longitude. It's lat and LNG. So we need to await for the results of get lat long of the first result from this results array. So once we have this, we now have latitude and longitude. And this is actually where the set selected prop comes in. By calling this and passing up the latitude and longitude, what that will do is set our selected state here. And when that is, when it has a value, it will render out a marker in that position. So if we go back to the map, we search for Google Kitchener. By choosing it, it does that whole conversion of converting from an address to results and results to lat long, set the state, and the state renders the marker onto the map. And that allows us to show the marker of the Google Kitchener office on our map. And that's how you can use these two packages together to add Google Places search input to your map in React.